so good to have George back with us. He's been kind of down in the mouth. <laughs> yeah, good one way to say it. He's had some oral surgery and some things that have to come back and uh, redo again for him. And so I'm glad that he's uh, getting on the hill with Martha. And Martha had to go pick up chicken all night, so I hope she counts them. Church, but anyhow, <laughs> she's going to go pick us fried chicken, and also she said the ice. I thought the ice was okay, but she said it wasn't, so she picked up some more ice for the uh, fellowship. So that's where she's at, and so she'll be with us here soon. And just uh, need to be in several places at once. That's not easy. All right, it is Memorial Day, and again, we appreciate those that have served. Uh, Terry has served in the Marine Corps. John served in the Army, and of all things, uh, uh, Brother Jay, his wife served in the Navy, and he served in the Navy, but he also served in the Marine Corps. So a uh, glut for punch, right? And then we had uh, back there, back with the Davidson, and he served uh, in the Air Force, and appreciate that, and uh, appreciate your service, and, and he comes to the other veteran right now. And I just tell them that she served in the Navy. She was a, you ready for this? She was a corpsman. It's part of it for that day. But they had, she was a corpsman in the Navy. And then they had their own army. They had nine children. So we appreciate them very, very much. And so we want to talk to you about some things that are very, very important. Um, when we think in terms of uh, what Jesus has done for us, uh, we should all realize that we've been enlisted in the Lord's army. And I was a, a chief master sergeant in the Air Force that led me to Christ. So he's the one that assigned me, listed me into the Lord's Army. And I appreciate that very much. I did uh, volunteer work as a, as a chaplain, basically, in the Air Force. And so I appreciate him that he led me to Christ, got me involved in that. And as a result, we were able to see many uh, Air Force men come to know Christ as their Savior and get involved in the work of Christ. So all that said, we want to talk to you about can you find a real Christian? And when I say that, I mean, I think about it. Uh, everyone in here, hopefully you'd say, well, preacher, I'm a real Christian. And that we would immediately claim that title as being a real Christian. In Acts chapter 11, we want to share some verses that show us the importance of showing uh, our credentials as a Christian. Uh, I've got on my uh, shoulder here, or on my lapel, I have a label that shows I'm a Texan, okay? And if you look at it closely, it's a Texas Ranger, so I'm a junior Texas Ranger. Okay. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, I just want people to know uh, where I came from, and uh, that way you can pray harder for me, okay? Uh, but as we think in terms of our ID, uh, several times this last week I had to show my ID, uh, various places that I went to, it was basically uh, to the doctor's office and so forth. Uh, two different times I had to show them my uh, ID concerning the fact that I had some sort of insurance and they would make sure they could get all the money they could from me. And uh, so anyhow, uh, all that said, uh, that's just part of life. So when people will ask us, you know, who do we belong to or what do we belong to, uh, to identify ourselves? And again, I think as a Christian, we should be more than ready and willing to identify ourselves as a Christian and to do what we can to enlist others in the cause of Christ. And so as we look here in Acts chapter 11 and uh, verses 21 through 26, I trust that these verses will help us and encourage us in the work that God has called us to do as Christians. <clears throat> so as we begin reading verse 21, and the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem, and they sent for Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch. When, who, when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man, and he was full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. And much people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass 
that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And so again, uh, sometimes people ask, well, why did we use the name Antioch? And I was told that at the beginning, the reason they named the church Antioch was because it would be the first church found in the poll book. Any of you know what a poll book is? <laughs> it, it'd be the first listed because it would be an A, Antioch Baptist Church. And so, uh, but I think it's interesting because in the scriptures it says that's where they were first called Christians was at Antioch. And so again, uh, how exciting as we look at God's word and see what it says here concerning uh, the teachings concerning the word Christian. Uh, the word Christian is actually found three times in the Bible, and so some may or may not be aware of that. And the first one occurs, as we just shared with you here in Acts chapter 11, verse 26, uh, where it says that the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And then in Acts chapter 26, verse 28, it says this, Then King Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. So he almost became a Christian is what his testimony was. And how sad that he didn't become one. But then in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16, we have the third listing. It says, yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify <laughs> God on this behalf. And it's interesting that there's a group out there, I have had family that belong to it, and they said if you go through any supper or any trials or whatever, that you're not saved, you're not a Christian. And yet Paul says very clearly uh, that Christians <laughs> will suffer if they serve God. Uh, there will come suffering. And I, and I think about it, Jesus Christ, the founder of the Christian faith, did he ever suffer? <laughs> uh, while because of his suffering, we're going to heaven because of what he was willing to do for us. So how dare we think, I'm better than Jesus, I'll never suffer. And if I do suffer, it means I'm not really a Christian. <laughs> okay. Uh, wow. Uh, amazing in it how ignorant people choose to be. And so real Christians, again, uh, it means basically to be Christ-like. And that should be our desire to be as much like Christ as we possibly can be. Uh, there is a famous leader, world leader, back years ago named Mohandas K. Gandhi. He was the prime minister of India. And uh, through him, uh, India, a lot of great things happened in India during his time. But one of the famous things that he did was fast. And sometimes he would go weeks and, and actually months without eating because of a particular problem that his country was going through. He made this statement and uh, to me, it's very sad, it's very frightening, uh, as he made this statement. But he made this, he said, I would have become a Christian if it hadn't been for Christians. Now, I, I don't know about y'all, but we're talking about Memorial Day. And Memorial Day, we reflect on the price that people paid so that we can have our freedom and so that we can enjoy freedom of religion and other things that we do in our country. But he said this, Mahanda, as, as he said this, and simply he was asked, what do you mean by that? And he says, uh, he said, I love the Christian concept, okay? But had only seen one couple that truly demonstrated that Christian philosophy in their life. <coughs> only one couple. And it's sad because India has had missionaries for many, many uh, years. Many, uh, missionaries have been sent to that, that country, and many people have become believers there. But he said he'd only seen one couple that really practiced the Christian beliefs. Wow. What a tragedy. Now, I think how different things could have been if maybe if he followed that one couple and had accepted Christ as a Savior. Uh, all they did would have a completely different history if, if that had happened. But because he said he thought that just too many Christians were phonies. Wow, how sad. So you can tell a real Christian by several lines. And so we want to get into that here in just a moment. But before we go any further, 
I ask God's blessing to help all our services. So I want to ask Brother Jay, if you would, Brother Jay, would you work on our prayer force at this time? Thank you, Lord, for church today. Thank you for the weekend and celebration of Memorial Day. Many of gave their lives for our country, for our freedoms, and help us as uh, Christians, Lord, to be a light in the world and start. Bless this message. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Jay. And again, we appreciate your service and the service of our other servicemen. And uh, so glad that you're here. Okay. And uh, but as we share with you, what is one of that we can tell that a person is a Christian? How can you tell a, a real Christian? Well, you ready? First of all, by his fruit. Hmm. By his fruits, we can know if a person is a Christian or not. And Matthew chapter 7. And I, I'm going to just read a portion of verse 16 and then also a portion of verse 18. But notice what it says here. Ye shall know them by their fruits. This is what Jesus said. So how can you know a Christian? By his fruits. That's how that you can know that he's a Christian. And again, that could be applied to so many other things. You know, you could say, well, how would you know that he's a carpenter? Or how would you know that he was a plumber? Or how would you know, you know, he, he might go over different lines like her. How would you know that he was a Marine? Or how would you know? Uh, but you, you could label people by them, uh, by their fruits. And so again, you shall know them by their fruits. So a Christian is going to reproduce other Christians. You ready? A dog reproduces bulldogs, we call them puppies. A cat reproduces kittens, which are little cats. And the sad thing about kittens is they grow up. <laughs> okay? And, but I, I could go on and on. But what I'm saying is, by their fruits, they'll be known. You go, well, there's a horse. I wonder if he had a mommy horse and a daddy horse, you know? We, we don't wonder that because that's the fruit of a horse is having another horse. And I'm afraid that maybe many Christians are more like mules. They don't reproduce. They're not capable of it. Uh, and, and how sad. And, and some of us definitely are as hard-headed as a mule. No question about it. But as a Christian, we should be reproducing ourselves and we should have a Christ-like attitude when it comes to things that are happening in this world and when it comes to things that are happening in your life can people say well he must be a christian because i don't know about you but i would have cursed if the doctor had told me what that doctor just told him or i would have cursed when that, that policeman pulled me over like he pulled him over I would, you know, and, and we look at all these different lines but instead a christian will bless people when others would curse them because that's what Jesus did. Wow. Isn't it amazing? And Jesus, how many times did he show love to people that showed hatred to him? Mm -hmm. That people that were out to kill him, he showed love. Amen. Wow. And he showed forgiveness. Amen. So, by his fruits, ye shall know them by the fruits. Verse 18. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. You ready? If you got an apple tree, guess what it's going to reproduce? Apples. Apples. You're right. You're right on the core of the problem. I mean, I, 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 I hope this message is appealing to you, okay? <laughs> uh, but what I'm trying to say is that a fruit tree reproduces after its kind. Uh, my kids, they have fruit trees everywhere just growing in the wild. Uh, they have lots of lemon trees there in the uh, tropics. Uh, they have 14 different kinds of bananas. Can you imagine that? Uh, some of the bananas, they actually prime up like uh, potatoes. Oh, they, they taste great. But, but, but anyhow, I'm constrained. But they have all sorts of things that just grow wild. Uh, they have one particular plant. It's, it's called taria. And taria comes in all different sizes. I mean, some start off this size and some get like this. I mean, gigantic. And they consider them a, a type of potato. But you ready? They actually have the male hormone in it. So that they said that you can tell a poor woman because she eats uh, that, that particular potato form, whatever, and she'll have hair on her chest. <laughs> and uh, be muscular. And uh, Levi wants to bring that home with him so they can have plenty of it here to you know, keep itself built up or whatever. Uh, but anyhow, that fruit, you can tell people are eating it because of what happens to them. 
uh, when they eat that particular <laughs> potato, that taro. So anyhow, uh, evil fruit that comes from an evil or a corrupt tree, please. Verse 18 goes on and says, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. So folks, it, it just stands to reason that if we're a good Christian, we're going to be reproducing others that will be Christians. But if we're not, then there's something wrong and there's something missing in our life. And we're not the Christian that we should be. And then by what he feeds on, that's what you can tell. Uh, that's another way that you can tell what somebody is. Matthew 4, 4, again, just given a portion of the verse, man <laughs> shall not live by bread alone. Uh, this is what Jesus said when he was being challenged by Satan, when he was being tempted. He said that man doesn't live by bread alone. And, and folks, wouldn't that be a poor in the world if all we had is, well, time to eat bread again? <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I like to take bread and put peanut butter and jelly on it. It's mm -hmm. not even sliced, you know, some bananas put on there or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then there's times, man, I, I, I'll make a confession. I still like fried bologna. I haven't had fried bologna mm -hmm. probably in 25 years. But anyhow, yeah, fried bologna, it looked like a little sombrero, you know, when, when I got through frying it. And, and then you put that on there and, you know, some mustard. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm making y'all hungry. We got food downstairs, so don't worry. You just stay here. Yeah. What but, about making a fried ham sandwich? Yeah, a good ham sandwich is great too. And even a tuna fish sandwich. But anyhow, what I'm saying, just a, but uh, bread alone, you know, Jesus said very clearly, he said, man shall not live by bread alone. So God's given us other things that we can enjoy. But it says clearly in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2, it says, but by the milk of the word. So God has special food for those that have just gotten saved, please. Those that have just been born again, he starts them out on milk. And uh, again, I have another grandson on the way. And the first thing he's going to start out with is milk. And I still got a bunch of uh, grandchildren that are still on the milk. And it's amazing how fast they can grow when they're home at milk. But you ready? I have a little granddaughter named Joanna. And she was born in January. They're still not feeding her meat. Can y'all believe that? And, and that's no baloney, okay? <laughs> but they're not feeding her any meat. So she still doesn't get milk mostly. Uh, and, uh, but anyhow, just because she's a baby. But as we grow up, and, and it's sad that many times Christians may have been saved for 20, 30 years, or whatever, but they're still on milk when they should be eating meat. Notice what it says. Again, if you read on 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2, but by meat, which is referring to the word of God. So uh, something about meat that just helps us to continue to grow. And, and we're not to feed, if you please, on, uh, out of garbage cans. And I suppose you can find a halfway decent amount of garbage can. But I'll go ahead and warn you, you don't want to eat out of my garbage can right now because <laughs> my dog, bless her heart, I'm so thankful for her. Uh, you know, she was a Siberian Husky that, that got, her mother got mixed up with the German Shepherd. So anyhow, quite a mix. But anyhow, we had a, a squirrel and, and Caleb would box for us. It was just the sassiest thing that you'd ever see. I mean, it just run up and just start swishing his tail at you. And it started going, <laughs> and just making all sorts of fun. And then it grin at you because this is what the whole lot that you could do. And I, I was very tempted to discharge my gun in the city, but <laughs> anyhow, that's my confession. I didn't do it, okay? And uh, so, th this squirrel was so dumb, it kept doing it to our dog, which our dogs have killed 24 cats that we know of. Uh, so our, our neighborhood, uh, nine lives goes very fast in our neighborhood, okay? <laughs> and, uh, uh, but anyhow, all that said, uh, when I was rolling the yard, I found half of a squirrel. Oh, <laughs> gosh. And it was this big squirrel. So, I mean, anyhow, uh, the other half is totally gone. I mean, from, he's just here. All I can see is his teeth. <laughs> and it's in my garbage can. Okay? So, that's where you don't want to get out of my garbage can. And uh, of all things, it was, well, I won't go into great detail, but uh, I was so glad to see that. Thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but anyhow, I couldn't figure out why the dog wasn't eating more. Now I know why. 
Uh, I'm not trying to be squirrely, but moving along. Uh, and I can tell she was extra cocky walking around, and that's because she got that, that menace, that squirrel, okay? And that, that squirrel, that, well, anyhow. But, and, and we're not just eat, uh, if you please, onions and melons and leeks and garlics and all those other things either. But we can feed on the meat of God's word. And as we start out on the milk. But all these are things that we can help us to, to know if we're real Christians or not. Do you enjoy reading God's word? Do you enjoy chowing down? Do you enjoy memorizing his word and meditating on it? Do you enjoy learning more about God? Do you enjoy learning more about how to be a better Christian? And then the third thing. By who we fellowship with. Come on. Who do you fellowship with? And, and when I say that, I mean, I realize that many of you are involved in a number of different things. And uh, as we think about that, as people grow up, some are involved in 4 H, some may be involved with the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts if you're raising kids or, or whatever. Some may be involved with a certain hunting group. Uh, some may be involved with, you know, uh, uh, just, you know, different types of clubs, groups, and so forth. But who do you fellowship with? And, and right now, folks, I have to give everybody an A because you're here at church and we're fellowshipping together here at church. And uh, yes, we're fixing to feed on some physical food here in just a little bit, and I'm looking forward to it. And uh, I've got some unique things. Uh, uh, Brother George bought smoked macaroni cheese. Y'all ever heard of that? Doesn't that sound different? Mm -hmm. So, it, anyhow, uh, okay. Uh, where else could any object you might say you need to do? But anyhow, there's some other things downstairs. But uh, but anyhow, we're going to culture together here just a little bit. And it gives us a chance to get to know each other in a better way. And then we get to watch the church literally grow in front of our eyes. Some of you, no tell how much you may grow before you leave here, okay? But what I'm trying to say is that who we fellowship says a lot about us. It really does. But notice this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through 15. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness, verse 15, and what concord hath Christ with Belial, that's the devil, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? So God gives you this contrast, and, and Paul is pending to the inspiration of God. It makes it clear that it's hard for us to fellowship with those that are not believers. And, and don't misunderstand me. We should do what we can to reach them for Christ, but there's only certain things that we can do. I mean, if an unbeliever says, hey, come and drink a beer with me, and then I'll listen to you about Jesus. Okay, we don't need to be doing that. Okay, uh, that, that completely destroys our testimony. And then there's other things, you know, they'll say, well, come and do this with me or whatever, you know, and I'll listen to you. Well, as Christians, again, there's only so far that we can go. But hopefully we'll be able to share with them the good news about Jesus and what Jesus can do for them. And that Jesus Christ can help us to have a peace in our heart, to help us to have a joy as we serve him. And there's a lot of people who go, I, I don't know how I, how I would live without beer. I don't know how I would live without smoking. I, I don't know how I would live without being able to, you know, to have a joint. I, I don't know how, you know, and they make over all these different things that it's just part of their life. But as a Christian, when we fall in love with the Lord, it's amazing how he can fill all those things and become the substitute that we need to help us to have a righteous life. So be careful who you pair up with. And again, this is very, very important that we pair with people that can help us in our walk for God. Righteous and unrighteous are opposites. So you can't have darkness and light in the same room. I mean, think about it. You say, okay, we're going to have darkness in this room, but we're going to have a light over there. <laughs> well, you have light. You have light in here. It may be a little light, but you'll have light. And so either you're going to have light or darkness. You can't have both. And so all that said, you can tell a Christian by who or what they fellowship with. And then also by what he forsakes. And folks, there's a lot of things in this world that we might enjoy. 
And uh, again, uh, there's certain lines that, you know, they're, they're not really necessarily that bad or whatever, but it, yet the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 10, verse 39, he that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. So there are certain lines that we need to forsake so that God can bless us and so that God can use us. And so have you turned from the worldly habits that ID yourself with them? In other words, there's certain things that we do it, we go first with that, well, that's what unsaved people do. That's not what Christians do. And then have you forsaken worldly pleasures that displease God? There's certain things that we shouldn't do. I don't know about y'all, but I'll make a confession. I like food. <laughs> and certain foods I like more than other foods. Uh, I, I really, really do. And uh, I think there's a place that I have to draw a line. I can't completely sell out to those foods. And sometimes I can have some of those foods, and then a lot of times I just can't because it gets me in trouble. Uh, have you given up also your worldly ambitions for God's will? What's the will of God for you? for your life. What does God want you to do for him? And that means simply are you willing to give up certain things that you enjoy so that you can please God? And there's certain things that you realize that pulls you away from God, and maybe they're not really that bad in themselves, but they pull you away from what God would have you to be. And so again, by what we foresee, that's what tells the world what kind of Christians we are. By the way that we forgive, Okay, and, and it's so easy to say, well, preacher, you don't understand what she did to me, or you don't understand what he did to me, or you don't, you know, and, and you might go through this list. I, I remember one man uh, that was going through some marital problems, and he just said, he said, I can't believe it. My wife has this, this memory. She just can't forget any of that. And then he went on and said, that's a result. She just can't forget it because she can't forget it. She re refuses to forget certain things. And uh, folks, aren't you glad that God has not only been willing to forgive us, but to forget our past? Mm -hmm. Why? To be able to forgive what God forgives, like Christ did. When Jesus hung upon the cross, remember one of the statements they made? He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And in my mind, I think, yeah, Jesus accidentally was nailed to the cross. <laughs> folks, he was accidentally beaten with a cat of nine tails. And it was beaten 39 times. Accidentally. Uh, he was accidentally had that, the crown thorns planted in his head. Accidentally. Folks, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What an amazing statement of Jesus. And while he's hanging on the cross of all things, one of the thieves that was hanging next to him went to heaven. Jesus said, this day shall thou be with me in paradise. Wow, isn't that fantastic? Isn't that unbelievable? And, and folks, as we look at Jesus, we need to learn how to forgive. And many times we need to learn how to forgive those in our family. We need to learn how to forgive those in our church family. Matthew 6, verse 14 and 15 again. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, at your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not them their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Wow. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad God's forgiven me of my sins. I'm so glad He's forgiven you of your sins. And folks, we need to learn. And nobody's ever going to do to us what we've done to God. When you think about our sins, no one's ever going to sin to anybody else like we have to God himself. So practice what you preach. God forgives us and we should do the same. Forgive others of their sins, of their shortcomings, of their meanness of place. God will punish us for not practicing his ways. Folks, we need to be obedient unto God. That's how we get saved. We accept what he's done for us. And by accepting that, 
by being obedient to his plan of salvation, we can look forward to an eternity in heaven. But also something else, by who he fears. And I guess once by who he respects, or by who he reveres, but by who he fears. The Bible says that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. It says also, fear him who is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. And so, folks, it's very, very important that we realize who God is and don't treat him like he's just the, the old man upstairs. And I've heard that so many times. Folks, he's anything but an old man. We need to realize that he is God Almighty and that he does have power over our body and over our soul. And then the last song, by how he finishes. And then we could say how he finishes the race. In 2 Timothy 4, 7, it says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Well, doesn't that sound like a veteran speaking? That has been through the battles of this life. That has been through these spiritual battles. And as he's been through the spiritual battles, he was able to say, I have fought a good fight. Folks, he literally had a fight against the devil. But he literally at times had a fight against his own flesh. And there was times that he had a fight against his brother, the Jews, his kinsmen. I have finished my course. And he said, I, I've done everything that's been placed before. Any of you ever had to run a, 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 a object course, a obstacle course? <laughs> uh, they're a whole lot of fun, aren't they? <laughs> it, it depends on who's chasing you, you know, uh, what they're doing to you. Uh, anyhow, but what I'm saying is, that's what Paul said. I finished the course that he set for me. I did what he wanted. I have kept the faith. I continue to do what God asked me to do. Acts chapter 6, verse 15. And as this was penned by a man named Luke, he was a physician. And he said, And all that sat in uh, the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. This was Stephen, who was considered the first martyr for Christ. And as Stephen was fixing to be put to death by the religious crowd of that day, by the Jewish crowd of that day, as they were fixing to put him to death, his face began to shine like that of an angel. And then he actually said this. He said, Lord, count not the sin to their charge. In other words, just like Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do. He would say the same thing. He said, don't, don't charge them to the sin of murder. And they saw his face as that of an angel. And he shared the word of God in such a way that it, it upset them. But again, as we look here in the scriptures, have you fought a good fight? Are you ready to go to heaven? Have you fought for the faith despite the, the critical audiences that you may stand before? Have you shared the message that Jesus saves? Can you find me a real Christian? Would you be classified as a real Christian, trying to make this as personal as I can. Do you demonstrate traits we just shared? Are you coasting as a Christian or are you pressing toward the mark? Are you so busy griping about Christians all being hypocrites that you haven't even tried to be what you expect a good Christian to be? Judge not lest ye be judged. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 13 says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if anything he be otherwise minded, God shall reveal 
even this unto you. <laughs> so folks, are you a real Christian? And uh, I might, if, if we're honest, there, there's times I can say, yeah, for sure, there's, there's times that there's no question that, that you're in control of my eye. But as we go on, we go, well, preacher, I'm only human. <laughs> and, and maybe that's what we might be finding ourselves saying to the Lord himself, just saying, Lord, I, I'm only human. Uh, there's only so much that I can do because I am human. I am limited. And so how true that is that we are human. The folks, Jesus was human too. And I don't even come back and say, no, he has God in the and folks, those of us that know Christ as our Savior, don't we have God in us too? Don't we have his spirit working and dwelling in us? And, and what I'm trying to say, the, the, the point is, is, can people see Christ in us? When they see us, what do they think? And, and hopefully they don't like, oh, another hypocrite from Antioch. I hope they don't like that. I hope it's the opposite. I hope they go, wow. Another one of those Christians, one of those working Christians from Antioch. Wow, there's something else. How do they look at us? People look at us and they make judgment calls concerning who and what we are. Can people see Christ in you? Does God see himself in you? And, and what I'm saying, folks, is that we all, we can all prove, can we? <laughs> And, and the thing I want to say is that when we yield to God and we let God work through us, we don't look at it later on and go, oh man, I can't believe I did all that for God. I, I, I can't believe that God used me. Oh, it was so, I mean, wow, God used me. Man, those were good times. That, that was great. That was exciting. That person got saved. That person got right with God. After, because I was doing what God wanted me to do it. And I can feel God speaking through me. I, I can feel God use me. Wow. Instead, how many times did look go, wow, boy, I sure got in the way. I sure stuck my foot in my mouth. I, I sure get, got, if you please, I, I, the, the, the flesh just took over. And, and, and I, I didn't let God work through me at all. I was, if anything, it was more the devil of the world or just me. Instead of God. And those are the times that We'll be embarrassed. I can't believe I said that. I can't believe I thought that. I can't believe that I did that. What was And as it said in the scriptures, one of the verses we read, that would be not a shame. Folks, let's do something for God. And let's be that, that Christian that we need to be. We need Christians that, you know, our, our uniform... <sighs> isn't necessarily a halo over there, <laughs> but it's a spirit and an attitude that people can feel, that people can sense, and know that we have some. And most people that truly see that, they go, well, they got something that I really could use. They got something that I really need. And they can see that difference. I, I think that's we start with the verses that Agrippa said, Almost that persuades me to be a Christian. Almost. And Paul, his answer that came back, said, oh, I wish that you had become a Christian and shared several other things. He said, I wish you'd be like I am uh, without these chains. Folks, Memorial Day. If I had a preacher service today, I'd say, this brother, this sister, well, y'all know, they knew Christ and people knew that they were saved. People knew that they were right with God. And their testimony says so much, Philippians 1 21, for to me to live as Christ and to die as gain. And that's their testimony. So folks right now, they're in heaven. Praise God, we can have a celebration here. It doesn't have to be a time of mourning. We can celebrate that our brother or sister has finished their race. They finished their fight, and they're with Jesus now. Wow. Well, I feel sorry for them. But I don't know. 
I may be doing your service. We have no assurance of what could happen to us in a day's time. As I mentioned, what was it, three weeks ago, with George's family, uh, cousins by marriage, that were killed in the head on collision. And, and for, I guess, 24 hours, they didn't know who they were. Wow, how fast things can change. How fast. So let's live for Jesus now. This be a testimony. Christ. Would you stand to your feet and begin our invitation? Lord, thank you for this time that we can come together and study your word and help us to see the importance of being a Christian. I think of Gandhi's testimony as he said, I, if, I, I'd be a Christian if it wasn't for Christians. And how sad it is that he, he could only say, I'd only seen one couple that really practiced the Christian faith. Wow. How sad. Lord, help us to live a life that would show people that Jesus is in us. And that we'd have a right spirit, that we'd have a right attitude. And it wouldn't be, I'm a Christian and I'm superior to everyone else because I am a Christian. I'm a good Christian because I say so. God forbid. But that people can sense that we have a spirit of love that we have a spirit of forgiveness, that we have a spirit of kindness, that we have a, a concern for others above ourselves, that we're ready to be a servant like you were and to do whatever it takes to, to point people to you, to make the sacrifices so that people can become Christians. Lord, help us truly to define the word Christian as we be Christ's life. We pray, Lord, for someone here that's never trusted you, that they might pray this simple childlike prayer and meet it with the heart and say, Dear God, please forgive me of my sin and come into my heart and become my Lord and my Savior. May they pray that in faith. For we ask this in your Son's name. Amen. <laughs>
and be able to rejoice and stuff. And, and son stood up and said, I wonder what that was. <laughs> Don't worry, the squirrel's still at the house. So we, we're not having a fight with the squirrel, okay? Uh, whatever. So, but we uh, are looking forward to good times together. And I think it's a chance to get to know each other just a little bit better. And uh, I encourage each other in the thanks of the Lord. And hopefully when we get through it, some of you will say, Preacher, can't we do this more often? And uh, so, and, you know, we can, we can see what we can do. And, uh, you know, and just have a big church bowl. We can do it every Sunday. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, and that is a lot of extra work for a lot of people. And then I appreciate uh, people like Charlie and his father that come and clean up uh, the building here. And I appreciate John that's been mowing the yard for us and trimming the edges. And, I uh, appreciate it so much. Oh, I'm sorry, I just old, old habits, you know. Uh, you see, anybody comes to head, it's always for me, it seemed like. And in the past, it was always me doing the, the, the whole thing out there in the sidewalk. And now, of all things, the Jay did and then you did. So, wow, what a good share of the world. So, uh, but anyway, I want to say I appreciate all that's going into this. I appreciate uh, with George being able to lead some for us today. Uh, the other for Caleb again, so he gets up and far. And so, anyhow, I know I'm going to miss somebody, but I don't mean to. But thank you for all working together as a team. I know that Richard messed up his back and he went ahead and tried to put some stuff together, uh, even though it was hurting. And so, I appreciate that. But anyhow, I want to say thank you, everybody. And so, thank you for making this a wonderful Memorial Day meal, uh, so to speak, as we fellowship here just a little bit. And so as we get ready to dismiss, if you can, I'll tell you about that. You stick around if you don't, we understand. Uh, Brother Jay will be preaching. Uh, probably, what, 10 minutes we'll be through eating. And... <laughs> okay, well, maybe an hour and 10 minutes from now, and he'll be preaching for us. And I'm looking forward to always bring some good message. And I appreciate our, our eating. Uh, but we want to go ahead and, and uh, dismiss from this service of prayer. Downstairs, we'll uh, bust the food when we get down there, okay? We'll get ready to eat. So I'm going to ask Caleb if you want to go for prayer for us. Caleb. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for serving today. We just uh, help us to apply what we've learned for our lives and for our hearts. And help us to be good witnesses to others, Lord. We're all listening. Amen. God bless you.